At the end of the 2012-2013 skeleton season, my teammate Alan Blackwell and I decided to take a mini combine test. We wanted to measure how the season affected us physically and put some numbers behind our athleticism and compare it to our combine scores from previous tests. A standard combine consists of eight events in three categories, but because there was still a foot of snow outside, we just were going to do one from each category. So one sprint, a 15 meter sprint, one field event, an underhand shot toss, and one weightlifting event, the power clean. First we set up a sprint test, and for that we had to set up laser timers, because with a distance as short as 15 meters you can't rely on reacting to a gun or hand timing it since the time intervals are so small. So we use infrared laser timers, and the athlete actually trips both the start and the finish timing eye to get the most precise and accurate time for the sprint. We also had our coach, Ambrose Serrano, set up the opto jump, which helps give a lot more data on the actual sprint itself. Two eleven. To lend some perspective, the Olympic Training Center 15-meter record is held by the bobsledder Dallas Robinson, who covered the distance in 1.93 seconds and hit a top speed of 9.8 meters per second. In track and field terms, he's a 6.560 meter dash sprinter. Allen had a best 15 meter time of 2.25 seconds on the day, which as expected was a little bit slower than his best time. I actually had a small PR of two seconds flat, but I think that has more to do with finding a more efficient starting method for the first couple steps. But there's more than just pure speed in pushing a skeleton sled or a bobsled. In the case of skeleton, you're pushing a 75-pound steel sled while running bent over, and a bobsled, a 400-pound two-man bobsled, or a 500-pound four-man bobsled. And that's why we have the additional tests in the combine to measure plyometric explosiveness and overall strength. It's kind of my thing is what I do. You know, you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta grit your teeth and go. You know, bite the bullet. Tell us why you're doing this combine. Because I'm a champion. I've said that already. Get out of my face. <laughs> Allen hit 12 and a half meters in the shot toss, which was a good bit short of his PR. And I hit 18 meters in the shot toss, which was just a little bit short of my personal record. Alan had to leave to go catch a plane, but for me it was on to the weight room to do the last test in this mini combine. Uh, the weight lifting portions are generally the weakest part of my combine in terms of points scored, but I still wanted to get a general assessment of how things would go. And we picked the power clean, which is a good multi-motor unit lift and gives a pretty decent indicator of overall strength. I hit 120 kilos on my first attempt, which is good for me, and I was ready to call it a day. Uh, the combine went really well, surprisingly well. Uh, considering how I felt, we had a fun little race with the British team two days ago, and in spite of the burnout, uh, it felt okay. I ran a two flat 15, uh, hit a V max of 9.43 meters a second within 15 meters, so that's good speed. Uh, shows that the acceleration is still there. 18 meters in the shot toss and 120 kilos in the power clean. So all in all, surprisingly good day. Okay, so when we tested Nick earlier on, it's called the opto jump through micro gate. We get a lot of s different speed variables. We actually use it for sprinting. You can use it for a lot of different things, but we get a lot of speed variables out of it. And so what we see is we can look at contact times for every step. Hopefully, the idea is that you're seeing decreases in contact times over time. We see a little bit of increases throughout, so maybe not ideal sprint. We look at velocities, which is very important. You want to see this a trend going up. As we can see, the velocity between the first step and the second step all the way through his last couple of steps through the 19 meters. Um, what we see is he actually gets up to over 9 meters per second, which is pretty good. He had a good, this was a PR run for him, 2 seconds in 15 meters. So we see some good times. What we notice here, and this is what's interesting, is you can look at, you always want this to go up. What we see here is actually on his, between his fifth and sixth step, or his fourth and fifth, um, we see a 7.67 meters per second, and then it drops to 7.57 meters per second. 
we look at accelerations at the same point, you can see that he had a deceleration. So it's actually nice we can actually compare not only whether or not he's accelerating all the way throughout, but we can actually look to see if there's any influence on what foot is decelerating. Now this one happens to be only one deceleration step, so it's, there's no indication of what happened. Maybe he just had a bad step here or what it may be. If we look back, we can actually compare this with another one of his runs. We'll look at his third run, the one right after it, which is also a, a pretty good run. We can compare the runs. Now, the blue one is his PR run. This was the fastest run. And actually, is interesting is that these don't have any deceleration steps, but he accelerates much better on the second and third step than he did on the other run. And in 15 meters, it's very important. You don't have a lot of time to catch up, so it's very important that your first three steps are, are crucial, that those are, those are very important for acceleration. So that's probably why he had a better run there. If we compare it actually to another run, it maybe wasn't as so good. So this is important to see here, is we actually see three deceleration steps. And they happen to be on the same foot. One foot, the opposite foot, back to the same foot, opposite foot, back to the same foot. Now we see D three deceleration steps, and we determined earlier that this is actually his right foot, which him being a jumper and planting off the left foot actually made sense. His left foot is a little bit more efficient in producing force. So over time, that deceleration step off his right foot actually makes sense. This is something we can actually look at and make, through our training, we can actually make certain uh, adjustments or um, different things that we can, we can hopefully even out the right and the left foot and we don't see any deceleration steps at all. And this is probably one reason why this particular run wasn't as fast as this one. Uh, other things we can look at, we can stride length, we can look at uh, the height of the run, the flight times, the contact times. Um, and it's very cool stuff. We can look at, uh, we got minimum and maximum for each, each variable for each run. Um, what else we got? If we just wanted to look at one, we can actually, we can actually go down here and we can make sure that we know if he contacted left foot first, we actually make sure we mark it correctly. And we look at different things. Also another thing is we can look at it real time if we play it back. We can actually look at his running in real time, step by step. And then there it goes. Step by step, you see a real time for flight times. If we wanted speed, you can see real time velocity of each step. And that's what I see in real time. That's what I see as the analyzer using the using the software. So it's it's a neat software, you get a lot out of it. We can make some real adaptations to the training, which actually is, is that's how we optimize training at the training center. So we make sure that we use our technology, apply it to the training, and make the adaptations that we need to make. So in Nick's case, maybe we need to work on the right leg.